think we are facing a war of attrition. In a way, that's something that can be for a long time. We must be prepared, Israel must be prepared for a long fight, maybe. Because we're talking about a smartphone intifada, a knives intifada. We're talking about youngsters, 15 to 25 years old, that just are influenced by the webs, by the net, by Facebook, by Twitter. And the intensity of attacks, which is five, six attacks a day, it's something unprecedented. I don't think we never had something like this in the past. So at this stage, we can't see light at the end of the tunnel. I think we are facing a long fight, and it's important to be prepared for that. In the first Intifada in 1987, and in the second uprisal in the year 2000, it was the street that started the uprisal, really. But then the leadership came afterwards and led the, the revolution the attacks against Israeli forces. At this stage, I think we are seeing the same process, exactly. Youngsters went to the streets. They were, in a way, I think, brainwashed by all kinds of webs. And who is behind those webs? I believe Hamas and Islamic Jihad, the most radical Palestinian groups, are behind those webs. And they are trying to send these youngsters as their agents, as their soldiers, to attack Israel, and I think they want to, to have an Israeli public opinion uh, tired. They want really that the Israelis will surrender in a way under uh, this pressure of these youngsters. Because you can imagine, I think that when you're all over the world, you can't imagine what is the feeling when you're just waiting for the next attack. Every moment, everywhere, somebody just can take a knife and try to kill you. So this is really, really a very tough feeling, and they know it. I, I believe that when people like John Kerry, the Secretary of State of the United States, or ministers of foreign affairs from Europe will come here in the next weeks and will say, let's bring a revival of the peace process, I hope that the first thing they will do is to stop this violence in the, in the social media, in the media in general, in the Palestinian territories, because that feeds these aggressions of, and these terror attacks of these kids. I believe the Islamic movement, led by Sheikh Raid Salah, is one of the most dangerous organizations ever in Israel. In some ways, even more than Hamas, because they are inside the state of Israel. And they have the support of maybe 150, 200,000 people, maybe more, nobody really knows. And they feed the myth that Israel is reoccupying Al-Aqsa Mosque. And that's one of the main reasons, one of I, the fool that sends the kids to the streets to try to attack Israelis. Because they are convinced this is true. And that's a huge lie. I think Israel must understand that w there is a media war parallel to the military war or to the economic or to the diplomatic war, where every computer, every camera, TV camera, is a weapon. It's exactly a weapon like an F-15 or a tank. And those who don't understand that, they are condemned to lose the media PR campaign. So I believe that Israel should clarify very, very strongly what are the aims in Al-Aqsa? What are the aims in the Temple Mount that Israel will not change the status quo? And to tell that to the world, to tell, to tell that to the Arab world, and to try like this, at least, to give the Israeli version of the reality. Israel is not isolated in the world, because don't forget what's happening in the Middle East at this moment, as we speak. You have groups like Al-Qaeda or like ISIS killing people because they are Christians, because they are Yazidis, because they are Kurds, and trying to occupy all this area and bring us in a time machine to the seventh century, really. So I believe the world will understand that the radical groups don't have a place, don't have a role, and that everybody should fight them, finally, because it threatens not only Israel, it threatens the whole civilization, Western civilization, so I believe that Israel is not alone.